finally the sixth and last video on the making of my library book nook. I made a globe in the first video, a book hutch in the second, the structure of the book nook in number three, an easy chair in number four, and in number five, a table, lamp, rug, and cigar. As part of finishing this library book nook, I made a cigar box, a Kodiak glass, books, a wall table, a Trivial Pursuit game, and photos and frames. This was really a fun project. In a world, a tiny, miniature world that exists only in her imagination. Hi y'all, I'm Tippy Cal, Mini Maker Sal's imaginary friend and video narrator. She just told you about the items she shows in this video, so let's get to it. Sal remembers those nifty decorative cardboard cigar boxes her dad had back in the 60s. Cigars like Romeo e Giulietta and Anti Antonio e Cleopatra. Sal came up with her own brand, Pierre et Marie. Of course, they are curious cigars with radiant flavor and are of Nobel quality. Guess you can tell Sal likes puns. On the left is the box she made up on her computer, then cut out. The green dash lines on the right show where she scored and folded the box. Sal covered the box printout with clear packing tape. This shows the box folded and glued together. Similar to constructing the cigar box, Sal made up this miniature Trivial Pursuit box. She scanned and redrew her own Trivial Pursuit game to make it as accurate as possible. She also covered this with packing tape, then cut it out and scored along the fold lines. She glued three of the flaps in the box with the short flaps stuck inside those. She then glued the bottom and side flaps inside the box. And voila, a one-inch Trivial Pursuit box. Then, the mainstay of all libraries. The books, of course. First, Sal cut the bound edge of a Better Homes and Gardens magazine in two different widths, then cut each book to be from that as seen in this video. Sal created and printed up a sheet of blocks of colors with titles on the spines. She spray glued the back of this paper. She then scored on both sides of the spine so she could neatly fold the cover to fit on the book. She pressed the cover down into place. It stuck, of course, because of the spray glue. Then trimmed the excess cover from around the bound pages. She covered one of the cut-up magazine blocks with a piece of fabric, then wrote lines with a metallic gold paint to indicate text. For a couple of her books, Sal printed out a strip of pages and the book covers. She covered the book covers with packing tape as shown here. She cut out the covers with some extra paper on the sides to wrap inside, as you'll see shortly. After scoring the fold lines on the pages, she folded them back and forth, leaving the blank pages at the ends. She sprayed adhesive on the back of the pages strip. On Sal's site on the printables page are a couple different books which have PDFs including the book pages and covers with instructions that you can print out and make. And here are a couple of the books she made with miniatures of their real covers. Sal thought this library needed a set of the Harry Potter books, so she scanned the box and book spines shrunk them down and printed them out to use. On the right, you see how she cut the box out. The red dashed lines show where she folded. After the folding and gluing it all together, this is the result of that set. To make frames for the photos she hung on the wall, Sal cut a bunch of one inch, one eighth inch wide strips of walnut veneer that's thin and quite easy to cut. After scanning and shrinking the photos she used, she drew lines on her computer for the sizing of the frames. She didn't want to spend time learning how to neatly miter the corners, so she just used straight sticks. She then painted the front and sides of the veneer frames in copper after she had glued them to cardstock. 
Using a large safety pin, Sal poked holes at the inside corners of the frames so she could use them as corner point guides. Sal then cut out the backing paper from the inside of each frame. And more of that, plus cutting the paper outside of the frames. She then glued the frames onto her photos. By the way, her photos include one she took of JFK when he was campaigning in Detroit in 1960. Another her dad took on stage of Paul McCartney at the first Beatles concert in Detroit in 1964. One of her maternal grandma from 1914 and four others she took over time. Using post-it notes cut to the sizes of the framed photos, Sal first loosely lined them up on the wall for placement. Then using a piece of removable clear tape, she moved those into place. After that, she glued them into place using tight bond. Needing a place to put her Trivial Pursuit game, Sal cut down four black plastic bar stirs to make mini table legs in the length as needed, as well as a piece of balsa wood for the tabletop. She created the tabletop design on her computer, printed it out, trimmed it. It's narrow enough that she covered that with clear packing tape to protect it. She then painted the table edges with black acrylic paint. After gluing the legs to the bottom of the table, she held them in position to dry with a card paper template she made. And this was the result, a funky Art Deco looking table to place next to the wall. Sal enjoys creative challenges, so she wanted to make a cognac glass from scratch. She purchased these 5 8 inch clear plastic balls on Etsy. She jammed the open end of the ball on the end of a paintbrush and used a large X-Acto knife to cut an opening for the cognac glass. She then sanded the rough edge first with fine, then with extra fine sandpaper. Time to paint the glass rim. She put a thin layer of the copper paint in a plastic container and rubbed the rim into that. The base of the cognac glass is a regular thumbtack. She filled it with acrylic modeling paste and smoothed it out as best she could. To make a hole for the thumbtack stem of the glass, she used a narrow round file, then cleared the debris with the end of a safety pin. After the modeling paste dried and she sanded down rough spots, Sal painted the tack base and stem in copper. Almost out of view, she super glued the thumbtack into the plastic ball. After trying polyurethane to simulate co cognac, Sal decided a bit of stain could darken it. You see, she added too much stain to her test ball and had to keep removing some of the liquid and add more polyurethane to get the color she wanted. She then transferred the would-be cognac from the test bowl into the cognac glass a drop at a time using a narrow cocktail straw. And this was the result. It took more than 48 hours for the 3 8 3 16 inch thick liquid to harden a bit, though she expects it to take several days to really dry. And now, finally, it's time for the big reveal. Here is Sal's library book nook all put together. It's a small crowded room, but for a private library, it serves its purpose. Though this is a man's library, I still like being in here. I think I'll have to find Alexander, whose library this is, to play a game of Trivial Pursuit with me. So, let's send this back to Minnie Maker Sal. This has been a fun and very educational project for me over the last several weeks. Everything took longer to make than I expected, and it's sinking in that though I'm a lifelong artist and graphic designer, making miniatures is a heck of a humbling challenge for me. I have to now figure out a way to cover this with something clear to protect it, as I'll be displaying it in the Tucson Miniature Society's 2022 show and sale on October 29th and 30th. 
I'm then going to take the rest of the month off from making minis and will be back working on my real kitchen remodel miniature. I think I'll next make a movable island with a drop leaf table and trash can pullout. I hope you'll come back and thanks for viewing this. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment or question for me. See you next time.